Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Patricia here, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator in the United States. And today we're going to do part two of the um, uh, stamp, I mean the uh, paper trimmer. Okay, so we're going to look at that. But before we do that, my name is Patricia Hauser. I'm a Stampin' Up! Demonstrator here in the United States, but more specifically in the far, 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 far north of Alaska in a tiny little village. My uh, shop, if you will, Stampin, no G, Stampin with Patricia dot Stampin up dot net. If you want to email me, Stampin with Patricia at Outlook dot com. If you want to go to my Facebook page and ask to join us, which we would love to have you do, Stampin with Patricia, you can search for that or click the link down below. By the way, you can click the link for either of these as well. We are in the process of creating a new series called Welcome to Stamping or Stampin' or Beginning Stamping. And so that's um, part of what this is. If you are turning in an order and would like to be in the drawing to be the hostess for that month, then this is the host code that you need to use. Now, if you're going to do that, you have to enter it before you finalize your order. So if you're having trouble with that, be sure and let me know. I can no longer add this for you. Stampin' Up! used to let us do that, and they do not let demonstrators do that anymore. I think we were doing that too often. And so they have said, no, nope, nix that. We're not going to do it anymore. Okay, but if you want to be in the drawing to be the hostess for that show, now every now and again, there won't be anybody who's in there. It doesn't happen always, but it does happen every now and again. Uh, so it's not always going to be a uh, drawing, but we try every month. I'd also love to have you join my team if you would like to do that. We would more than uh, absolutely love more than anything for you to join our team and we are an amazing group of people and we'd love to have you do that so that's the that part then the next thing is all the time most all the time i should say we have a mini catalog and an annual catalog the mini catalog goes from january to june and then july to december the annual catalog goes from may to april so uh, depending on when you're watching this, these may or may not be the current catalogs. But if it is the current catalog and you do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to be your demonstrator and earn your business. And I would be more than happy to send you each of these catalogs. Now, today is mostly about the paper trimmer, but I am going to look at one if I can get the page, one stamp set, and that is elegantly said. We're not necessarily going to use the bundle, although I'll show it to you, um, but if you would like to do that, if you order the bundle, which is in this case a stamp set, here let me show it to you, a stamp set and a punch that punches this out, you get 10% off if you buy both at the same time. Okay, but what today is about is about the paper trimmer. And I've already showed you, whoa, sorry about that. My catalog just fell. <laughs> um, I've already showed you quite a bit about the paper trimmer. But what we're going to do is take it a little bit further. We looked at the features and the benefits and all of that. And now we are going to actually look at cutting and scoring our paper. Of course, we know what's cut. <laughs> we know what cutting is, but cutting, um, scoring is also part of that. It's been a long day. I teach kindergartners. So, um, we are going to look at our paper. We have a regular 8.5 by 11 piece of cardstock. Okay, this is Stampin' Up! Basic White cardstock. And we are going to score and cut this. And because I'm going to make two cards and want two card bases, what I'm going to do is take the long end, the 11 inch side of my paper, and put that in parallel 
to the cutting blade, okay? And so I'm going to take then across the top, the eight and a half inch side, and I'm gonna put that on four and a quarter, okay? That is half of my eight and a half by 11. I do not want to cut on this, I just want to score. So I'm gonna move my cutting blade out of the way, and I'm gonna use my scoring blade. And as you can see on mine, I have written score on there so that I don't accidentally cut when I mean to score. Now if I score when I mean to cut, I can just simply cut, no big deal. But if I've already cut it and I really meant to score it, that's when I have a problem. All right, so to score, I've got it on four and a quarter, and I'm just gonna run this up and down two or three times, doesn't have to be much. I'm just making sure that I have that score. I hope you can see that. Okay, then I'm gonna turn it the opposite direction. This time the long end is gonna be up against the top. And one thing you do wanna be sure you do is put it up against, make sure that it's all the way up against the top of that, or if you're doing it on the bottom, all the way at the bottom, either way, but you want to get it all the way up at the top. Now, this is 11 inches, so half of that is five and a half, and I want to get it exactly on that five and a half. Let me make sure you can see this. It's right there. Let me move this. Okay, five and a half, all right? And I'm going to put it right on that five and a half, okay? Make sure it's solidly against that top line. And then, if you are new to cutting, one thing that I really recommend is that uh, you start from the bottom away from this edge. Because what can happen is if you're cutting down, pulling towards yourself, you could, if you're not holding this firmly, pull this paper, this cardstock toward you. And you don't want to do that. So, notice I'm lifting this when I move either of the either the paper the cutter or the score blade. I am holding the the protector bar up so that it doesn't go down, okay, until I'm ready for it to. Now, I can start in the middle. I just push down and cut with my blade. I you don't necessarily want to do that, but if you do, you cut and then come back the other direction. Now here is one thing that I will advise, and I now have two pieces of cardstock, but here's one thing I will advise, is that you go up and down with your cutting, and it's like, wait a minute, Patricia, you just said don't come down or come toward me. Well, there's two things you could do. One, make sure you're holding this very firmly, I do not want to have this gap, okay? But once I've got it up against that top, I could hold it very firmly. Or if I'm coming toward me, I could put it on the bottom and pull toward me that way. Either way, as long as I don't let that cardstock move once I have gotten where I want it. So now I can fold this got a little something on my cardstock, fold it, use my bone folder, and give it a nice crease. Now, if you're really, really, really new and you do not have a bone folder yet, you can use your thumb. But I will tell you this, after a while, you're going to get really tired of using your thumb. Okay, so I like my bone folder. I just give it a nice crease, and there we go. As long as my card is laying mostly flat, then I'm good. I don't want it sitting up like this, which is what's going to happen if I don't give it a good crease. Okay, either way. But I now have two pieces of cardstock. So I've drawn you a very simple... I'm going to come down to that, so I'm moving the camera, so close your eyes if you don't want to see it move. Okay, right there. I have drawn a very simple, um, just a little drawing for you. So this is the 11 inch side, this is the 8 and a half inch side. If I'm going to make this card base, 
I am going to score first at four and a quarter with the on the long side, okay, and then I'm going to turn it and on the sh uh, on the excuse me on the okay. <laughs> you go half regardless of which way. Depends on whether people call this the, this is definitely the short side, but I put the long side up at my, the top of the paper trimmer. Okay, so I don't want to make that confusing for you. And then I cut the second step, not the second cut, because there's only one cut and one score. Okay, so that'll help you. Then this card base is five and a half by four and a quarter. Five and a half by four and a quarter. It is one of these sections, if you will. Okay, so I've now got that. That is my card base. I can layer stock from then, from that point, and the first thing I'm going to do you do is show you the first layer that I might put on here. So I would drop it down. Now, <laughs> you can skip some of these measurements, but let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to go down to five and a quarter by four. I'm dropping it a quarter of an inch each drop. Then I'm going to go to four by three and three quarters. I'm dropping it each measurement a quarter of an inch. Then I'm going to go to four and three quarters by three and a half. Drop another quarter, four and a half by three and a quarter. Okay, and as I do that, then I can take my layers so this will be four and a quarter by three. Four by two and three quarters. I'm dropping a quarter of an inch each time. But what I can do is skip one of these. I could skip that measurement and that measurement. And so I would then have, let me use something a little skinnier. I'm going to skip these two. So then I would have five and a quarter by four and four and three quarters by four, three and a half. I don't want that to get confusing. I don't want that to mess you up. But I do want you to see that it drops a quarter of an inch for each one. All right, I'm going to move it back up. So close your eyes if you don't want it to make you dizzy. And I'm going to make my first cut. My first cut is going to be five and a quarter by four. So I'm going to take my paper trimmer. I'm going to go in here and I usually do um, kind of make your own decision, but I'm going to go ahead and go with, it doesn't matter because I'm going to get four sheets out of this anyway, but I'm going to go down to five and a quarter and I'm going to cut. Notice I am pulling this toward me. I've got it lined up against the top, but I'm going to hold this very tightly so that it doesn't shift. I'm pulling it toward me. Okay, so now I have five and a quarter. I'm going to turn it and cut it at four. Okay, I'm going toward the top. I've got it a level against that line and cut. While I'm at it, I might as well cut the second one because I already know that this is five and a quarter by four, so I'm going to cut my second one at four. Okay, make sure it's up there because this time I'm pulling toward me, but you'll notice I'm wearing my blade at the same rate because I'm going up and down, up and down. Save these. You will want to use them. I know that feels like it's, oh, it's just a scrap of paper. Yeah, but you could put a sentiment on there. Lots of things you can use that for. All right, now let's look at our measurements. I now have a card base and a layer. A card base and a layer. And if you notice, when I layer this on here, it is exactly an eighth of an inch all the way around, assuming I get it level or even all the way around. Okay, that's my first layer. 
Let's do another layer. My next layer is five by three and three quarters. So I'm gonna take my black this time. This is basic black, and that measurement was five by three and three quarters. It, what's the uh, building term? Check twice and cut once, or measure twice and cut once. So I'm going up toward the top. I've got it even, and I'm cutting. I'm going to turn this. My measurement was five by three and three quarters. I'm going to three and three quarters. Can you see that? Three and three quarters. There we go. Cut. And again, I'm already doing this. I might as well do my second three and three quarters. Now, part of the reason I'm doing this like this is because I want you to see that I might as well cut two while I'm at it. Okay? So, then this perfectly even all the way around, and I now have my base, a layer, and a layer. Now, I can't stamp, or shouldn't probably stamp, unless I'm doing embossing on a black layer, okay? So I do need one more white layer to go on top of that. Now, I could go to the very next measurement, or I could skip one. We're going to go ahead and go to the very next measurement, but I could skip one. Okay, the very next is four and three quarters by three and a half. Four and three quarters. Make sure it's even. By four and three quarters by three and a half. <laughs> it's like, how many times do you have to check it? You have to check it as many times as it takes to get it right. Okay, three and a half. Cut. I've still got this. Three and a half. And cut. All right. Again, don't throw those away. Those are very valuable pieces. And I now have a third layer on there. And on white, then, I can very easily stamp on. So let's quickly do a stamp. I have, by the way, real red as one of my layers. So I'm going to use real red as my color for my stamp. I'm going to open it up. That um, Sorry about that stamp set I told you about. This is the one I'm going to use. I'm going to pull it out. I am going to pull out my stamp. I am going to, whoops, not that block. I want to fit it to the block the best I can, and I'm going to pull out my pierce mat, Stampin' Pierce Mat, and I'm going to put that here so that I can stamp on it. I'm going to get good coverage on my ink. You'll notice I move it around. I am going to Normally, I would cover this, but that's okay. I am going to stamp this here. I'm not rocking it. I just push down. I don't actually need my pierce mat. As a matter of fact, I won't use it um, because this is a red rubber stamp. Uh, you can see it right here, red rubber, and it's got the padding already in it. Okay, then I am going to put my sentiment on there and... Let's see, life has changed for you, but my love and support never will. So I'm going to use that, put that one on here. Got to make it, you don't have to put it even um, on your block. Okay, one thing I want you to be aware of, you see how I've got ink here on the edges? I don't want to rock this because if I do, that red ink is going to be on my card. Okay, and oh shoot, I wanted to do that in black. We're going to do this one. Sorry about that. I goofed up. I know, I can't imagine. Okay, I'm going to put this up top. 
and hope I don't get any ink on me. Woo I have a very small space here in my classroom to craft. All right, so I'm going to put this right there. Okay. There we go. Oh, yeah, baby. All right, and then I'm going to stamp this off, get that color off of there as good as I can. Stamp, 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 get it off. And then use my stampin' scrubber or my chamois. I'll show you this. One second. And rub that off. Make sure it's nice and clean. There we go. And I want black. Okay. Get me some nice good coverage on my ink. This is M Memento Tuxedo Black. And right there, I'm going to put that. There we go. How awesome is that? Then, put those aside. I am going to layer these up on my card. Stamp, ink, and paper. That's it. Whoops, wrong. That's a new one. I want my old one. And I'm just going to glue these layers down now. Put some glue on there. Make sure I get it on my edges and corners, etc. Make sure I've got this even all the way around as good as I can. There we go. Put my next layer down. Edges, corners. There we go. There's not a lot of glue. That's a very tiny amount of glue. It looks kind of like a lot, but it is really not. I'm just, it's got a small nozzle there. There we go. And on my card base. Now, I could put any of these layers up that I wanted to on dimensionals. Matter of fact, I think I will put this layer up. So we're going to pull these off. Put them on the back. And it doesn't really matter which layer you do. That is entirely up to you. Okay. I'm going to put a couple of these in the middle like that. And then I sort of push in with my fingernail and it pops up that little release paper. And then I'm going to take that off. Now, I like to do my cards with a white base. I don't always, not by any stretch of the imagination. However, the nice thing about doing on a white base is that I do not have to put a, car, a, a, a piece of cardstock on the inside. It does balance the weight a little better to do that, but you don't have to. Then I'm going to do my flower again in real red. Get some ink on there, and I'm going to do this on the inside, right about there. There we go. That's the inside of my card. I'm also going to do my envelope. You always, I tell my students in workshops, when I have workshops in my home, that we never send a naked envelope. And there we have it. Oh, shoot. I've gotten some. I have an, an ink eraser or an eraser that I'll use to, I did get my hand in the glue or in the ink somehow, but I will erase that. And there is my card. How simple and easy was that? And it's simply layering cardstock, stamping, and putting my sentiment on, decorating my envelope, and decorating the inside of my card. Very simple, very elegant, and it just so happens to have an elegant name, elegantly said. Now, I could also have punched out a, let me just do that since. Okay, here's another thing I'll show you. Do you see how these layer like this, okay? And then the white pe the white goes on the front like this. This red will be on the card base. So nobody's going to see that I have punched out of the middle of this. There we go. Nobody will see that. It will be completely covered up. And I have not 
wasted a piece of red cardstock to punch out that punch. And besides that, isn't that beautiful? Now I could even put this on the inside and a note on that or something. Who knows? Okay, but we could put it on the front here somehow. Okay, there we go. Very simple and a good way to use your punches without using extra paper. All right, I hope you've learned something new. Have a good one. Come back next time. Be sure and give me a thumbs up down below. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already done that. Click the bell so that you'll get notifications when I do publish a new video. And be sure and share this video with your friends who might or might not even be interested in uh, crafting and card making. Thanks. Appreciate you being here. Have a good one.